everybody welcome to my youtube channel today i'm going to be doing a digital sketchbook tour so like some of these are schoolwork some of these are for fun and then some of these are more like finished things and they're not necessarily like coherent i guess like they i'm jumping all over in time some of these are really old and some of these are like newer but i'll, I'll talk you through this so this first sketches were for my um, anatomy class and we're working on face face features and stuff. Nothing internet, nothing too exciting. Um, this was a personal piece. This was a redraw of another piece that I had did traditionally and I tried it doing it again um, digitally. So this is one of my first like more finished looking personal digital pieces. This used, I used to sell this one as a print, but I don't sell this one anymore. I kind of want to redo it again, but we'll get there when I get there. Um, this one was for a class. Um, it was a triptych, so I had to have like beginning, middle, and end scene. Uh, it was a painting class, but we literally had like two weeks left to do it. So I did a digital painting. So a traditional painting, but this is from Castle in the Air by Diana, Diana Wayne Jones. And this story, this guy is like dreaming of this girl. And he realizes, like, oh, it wasn't a dream. She was real. And he has, like, this magic carpet, and she gets, like, stolen. He's like, oh, no. But he ends up saving her in the end, and they get married, and it's really cute. It's the same author who did How to Live in Castle. Um, some more personal pieces. I was just trying to explore more, like, stylistically. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to do stuff. Another style exploration thing, I don't really do backgrounds, so I was like, okay, let me, like, figure out what this will look like. And, like, I notice I'll get to a point in piece where I'm like, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. But then for it to look finished, I need to, like, push past that a little longer more to look at, make it look more finished. So this is, like, the more finished pushing myself part. That was interesting because I was like, oh, this actually looks kind of finished and neat. Again, not that super interesting, just figuring things out. This one was another design. I have like a lot of character designs, even though I'm not a character designer. I just like to do that for fun. I know you're not supposed to keep the lines there, especially if they don't line up. So ignore the lines. But this is from the book Spin the Dawn. And in this book, this main character is like challenged with making like three impossibly like amazingly magical dresses. So one from the sun, the moon, and the stars. I think they like all each have like a piece of like the actual like element in it but they're all like magical um this is how i imagine she would look in them or how the dresses would look they're all like very chinese inspired did these are so i can't really tell you specifically which pieces and bits are like historical and which bits were like made up because i i don't remember and this is the moon one more flowy trying to give them very distinct shapes but very elegant and like detailed over the top vibes I don't know, I guess in my brain, I imagine this one to be the most, like, modern-looking, like, influences. And this, didn't love how this one turned out. I kind of wanted her dress, it, it doesn't shine in the way I want it to, but I think it's still kind of the silhouette I would be going for. This is another piece I redrew. My sister says she likes the old version better, but whatever. She's sitting next to me while I make this, because I need an audience. <laughs> yeah, nothing much to say about this one. This one... I don't know if you guys know Genshin Impact, but I like to read you the characters like African inspired, like the main characters, Lu Mean and Aether, um, kind of inspired by the Shosha tribe. And they have like these kind of patterns and things on their clothing that was like I was drawing from, but I also wanted to keep that kind of Genshin fantasy aspect of it. I think they're missing, you know, some of the little, little bits that really make it Genshin, but I think it's almost there I think really fun I don't honestly don't remember who's Lumine and who's Aether but I really do like the, the guy's outfit um a little more my sister likes the girls a little better um but I don't know I think my head headcanon for the personality is like the boy he's kind of like quiet like he can beat things up but he's like if you're like kind of mean to him he'll kind of be like a little sad about it <laughs> with the girl like the sister I feel like she would be she would mean mug you and she look at you funny for saying anything rude that's my head canon back to some more character design stuff so these characters are like brothers this tall guy 
they're both like demon princes and they use magic. So this tall guy, he's the firstborn and his outfit was inspired by a Japanese longbow. It's not fully realized in this illustration, but we'll get to it in another sketch. But I don't have his story fully realized, but he kind of has like these tattoos here that's kind of sealing some kind of curse. Just really like giving men really long hair. So it's really, really love the silhouette of it. And then this is his younger brother. He's kind of like, just kind of like way more evil. This first guy is like really chill actually and pretty charismatic, but like an easygoing. But this guy is kind of like mean, power hungry, a lot more like their father. Um, his younger brother overthrows him because he's like, why do you get to be king and not me? Because just because you were born first and I'm better than you and blah, blah, blah. So his kind of story arc is just him trying to get his thrown back. Not purely because he wants to, but mostly because his brother's like this tyrant and he's like, no one deserves to like have to deal with that. But yeah, their their family's crest or seal is a pomegranate, which kind of also reminded me of like Hades and how I kind of like not necessarily demons, like not necessarily demons in the sense of like Christian mythology, but I guess more similar to maybe Greek where they're not necessarily evil. There's kind of like this underworld aspect. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. This is a more like realized, like cleaner idea of what he looks like in his outfit and stuff. And this is kind of more like how big I imagine his longbow to be. Like, I think, again, it's more exaggerated. It's not like historically accurate. It's just inspired. Again, ignore the lines. I know they don't match up. Okay, this is a part of the same story of the cousin. I also like this character. He's kind of, he's kind of an eyes everywhere kind of guy. Hence the eyes on everything. But he's very like, sneaky sly huge liar he just plays all sides he'll he'll basically side with anyone who thinks he thinks is gonna like be the winning team um but somehow he never gets caught or in trouble for any anything everyone kind of thinks they have an upper hand on him because they know like oh i know you but really for real though he's playing like 40 chess like he's ahead of everyone and somehow can get out of like sticky situations He's not necessarily doing all this for the sake of like being the most powerful, but he just doesn't want to be in an unfavorable position. Like he's kind of just doing all this so he can constantly be in the most comfortable position possible without necessarily have to be in charge of anything, just kind of like hanging out. This is more sketches of him. I just kind of like his silhouette, how he's kind of like the his his like dress or skirt or whatever you want to call it. It's kind of like almost cuts off within and then goes a little longer. I can't really remember this whole dynamic because I drew them like a while ago, but this girl here in the brown. I don't remember the whole dynamic really, but she's kind of more, she's, she's definitely richer, but she comes from like the countryside and she has like a budget state. I think they're like maybe an arranged marriage or like arranged setup, I, I imagine. I mean, like she doesn't necessarily care about all these fakeness and all this drama. Like she cares in a sense like it's political, but not in the sense it's like, why don't you guys just say what you need to say instead of being around the bush and, and not saying what you mean kind of idea, which I think that would make an interesting dynamic because he's like kind of like really fake and she's kind of like really real. um, So she's like kind of always fussing up about him. I think he's like, she's probably like the only person he lets like his mask slip a little bit. I don't know. Um, This is a different story. This is like how I um, have a few snippets of his story like story like story time esque thing on my TikTok. Um he's very sly. He's kinda like does what he wants, even though he's kind of a pretty high ranking like kind of person. He really loves the jewels and shiny things. So he is always he just always has gold or something like really nice on. This is just me trying to figure out his look more. And other characters looks like this is kind of more like how I'm going with than I went with these characters. This is me trying to figure out like how dragon I want him to be. If I want him to have like his horns and his his tail and all that stuff. Again, just exploring his character a little more. I like love these. I think they're called snake bites. I love these. <laughs> anyway, but I like um he's all these jewels and things. This is his pearl. Like in this story, they have like the dragon's pearl. It's kind of like their soul. So they're not like sword. They don't usually have them. They have them like hidden away. But they're super powerful and like humans want to use this pearl for magic and stuff. Would you get sneak bite? No. Never. Oh, this is another character. Not 
different story. I, I think I'm not sure. I kind of just designed him. I think he's like a he's like a magic user, maybe an exorcist. Nothing super fully realized, but I think he was also kind of fun to draw with these eyes on his hand. Um, another Genshin Impact character, cannot remember his name. Um, but this is like a more like teenage or like older version of him. I think he's just really funny to play in game because the sword is like way too big for him and he's like literally swinging it with his whole body and I'm like so why are they letting this kid go like outside and fight, fight all these things by himself like where is his parents I don't know so I was like what would he look like older I feel like equally as I guess serious looking but, a, but definitely friendly this is also like kind of not super new drawing I'm just like still figuring out how to draw digitally when I was doing this um this would do for like draw this near style for like maybe like 500 600 followers i'm not sure you guys can draw this still it's up and i'll and i'll, I'll tag me and i'll be like wow <laughs> i don't know um used to be my profile picture for a while um some more just character exploration like style exploration i really like character ideation i don't really like do character design as my job is more like illustration is my job so i do character design as for frenzies Another character exploration. I think this this is the same character like in the same world as Lekai. She's like Greek, Roman, and like Egyptian inspired. Not Roman, just like I guess English, like armor wise, like English knight inspired. Kind of like meshing all those two together. But in this story, she's kind of like the god of war. But at this point in the story where like she interacts with Lekai, she is kind of like retired. So like. They understand she used to be the god of war, but she kind of doesn't want to do all that anymore. Like she's kind of like, I get to do what I want because I feel like it, and no one's gonna like challenge her on that. So this is like some beginning sketches, trying to figure out, you know, how I want to incorporate and mix those two cultures, a little couple cultures. So it's just some exploration on how I want to pattern her like skirt and stuff. I really like this in one because I feel like this blue feels very like African inspired more than like Greek or something. But I ended up, I think, going with this red one because I think this this moon and sun kind of symbolism could be used on other things without her being there and, and being able to identify it as her. This one is a more finished drawing. Again, just kind of digital exploration, trying to figure out how I want my style to be. I think this one's in my zine. I think, yeah, this one's going to be my zine. Some more character exploration. No story in particular. I just still trying to, like, I like matching and, and mix matching, like, European and African culture and see how that looks I feel like it's not it's not really utilized a lot especially like more medieval more like old-timey ancient stuff can have some really interesting looks that people aren't tapping into as an aesthetic people need to tap into another more finished piece an exploration yeah not much to say about this I think I teach you this is one of the pieces my teacher really liked and I was like hmm I was kind of surprised I was like oh okay I thought this one wasn't bad but I he just would pick the most random pieces to be like, I would like this one. I don't know. This one, some house moving castle fan art because I think their dynamic is so cute. Um, I forget the baby's name, but they do have a baby in like baby spoiler baby reveal. They do have a baby at one point in the book. Spoiler well, after <laughs> Yeah, like too late. I said it. I said spoiler after I already said it. But basically in the book, the scene I thought was funny was like first time how sees his baby. Like literally the first time how sees his baby, he like sees his baby and he's like what an ugly baby i don't remember if she actually hits him this is my head canon if she didn't i feel like she would i feel like it would be like punk squash how and his baby i feel like in my brain the baby was a redhead as a baby and then kind of becomes more blonde as he gets older i know that might not be the most realistic for hair colors but it, they have magic they can do magic there's a talking fire i don't know i think i can get away with that this is them their dynamic still too i think she's always fussing and he's always trying to like be like sophie please please let me be and she's like no <laughs> um these are i don't know like this is definitely seen from a book from the book i don't know if this was maybe it was because i think in the spoiler <laughs> in the in castle in the air in the book she gets kind of sapped away like he like sends her away for her safety through magic but she kind of gets she doesn't get exactly what she's trying to get and kind of gets plopped in the middle of her where she's trying to go Anyway, so I think this is kind of like what that's inspired by. In another scene, she's she had been turned into a cat, so her brother in law changes her back into a human. So this is kind of what I imagine it'd be like her like 
the car like the least I like put together you probably see her I know the hands and stuff like some of these hands are kind of wonky like these, <laughs> these sketches are kind of wonky I don't they're just like little doodles like I I know guys leave me alone um and then her like her disciplining her kid I feel like he'd be he'd just be a cute kid I can imagine Sophie going gray like I can see that happening but I cannot imagine how letting himself go gray so like they're both the same age but I don't think he'd be going great like she'd be going great he's too vain but I can imagine their son I feel like having three being very stylish very much a pretty boy I feel like he'd be like very pretty boy ask like how but more reasonable I guess <laughs> like Sophie more personality like Sophie but she's just always fussing at them they're both doing something wrong <laughs> Kilo I did make a comic from this I think it's on my Instagram I think someone we posted on Tumblr and I was like my comic I don't know how to work. Yeah, I think it might just be on in my Instagram. It also might be on TikTok too. It's not on my website, but it's like this cute little like story of them being domestic and cute. It's more like domestic kind of sketches. I imagine Sophie's sister, I can't remember, maybe it's the oldest, no, the youngest one maybe. I can't remember which one of them gets married to a magician too. And I imagine them all having their kids having Honestly, a good head I together. Think it was the oldest. Remember when they switched and she went to go well, to Well, Sophie's the oldest. Between the other sisters, oh. I mean. So the middle child? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I imagine Sophie's hair being, like, super red. Um, oops. Got cut off. I think this one's the youngest sister, the one with, like, slightly reddish hair. And this one being the um middle, the brownish hair. Brownish, blondish hair. I think her hair's kind of, like, brownie. Like more brown than brown red, but still. Um, other scene from Castle in the Air where Abdul, I think the main character's name is, like mm -hmm. Sophie gets turned into a cat and he's like, Hey, can you help me? Um, man, I don't know this guy. I hope he helps. And the sister in law, her, well, not the sister in law, the, the sister, Sophie's sister, is like, Hey, it's Sophie. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Thanks for bringing her back. And he had no idea it was Sophie. Sorry, guys, I'm spoiling this book, but it's a cute book. You should read it. Or Sophie's, like, sisters, kids, I can imagine, Um, you know, having, I think, the oldest boy first, who was closer into age with Sophie's kid, and then the little sister. And them just kind of being, like, really close. I think really cute domestic things. This is Sophie's kid older, I think. He, I can be super stylish. In my head canon, he's, like, travels a lot, so I want to have a, little, a lot of aspects of, like, more foreign cultures and like little trinkets that he keeps with him like maybe like beads in his hair and like in rings and things that he gets from traveling maybe some embroidery on his outfits I don't know and then I can imagine like him and his cousin the girl are constantly bullying the brother because he's just so serious and stern about everything and they're both kind of jokesters he's definitely like he just is very easygoing very like excitable He's serious, more serious than how, but but definitely very um adventurous. Send you fan art. I think I could do another pass in line work, but I think I was pretty happy when I made this. So I was like, whoa. I think a lot of times when I'm trying to draw things, I'm like learning how to draw things, I'm just realizing it takes more time than I imagine it would to make it look nice. So this was like, oh, this is, good. This is pretty good. Okay, this is another world, I guess, like story world that I'm, I've been working on. I have a comic for him. It's called Trial of Stars, I think that's called. It's on my, like, literally everything. Um, So you can go read it. I do have a scene of it, too. So I was kind of trying to figure out what his face markings would look like. So he's, like, Japanese-inspired. Because when he uses his magic, when he uses his magic, he, his markings change when it's active versus non-active. So I was kind of figuring that out. These aren't the markings that I end up with, but just exploring it. Again, ignore the lines. <laughs> ignore the lines. <laughs> Some more um, exploration. So these are his, like, Econ and Jigen are, like, if I'm saying these wrong, I, I, I'm i sorry. I'm realizing, like, i actually not sure how I pronounce these. I just, like, was like, this looks like a cool name when I wrote it down. But they're inspired by different cultures. Econ and, and Jigen are his um, companions in this story. This is how I imagine she looks. She's, she's someone I would kept going back and forth with on how I wanted her outfit to look like. They're all, okay, She this is like a magic-based story. So Econ is like a magic one-based user. 
So she's this giant fan. I think this is maybe it was also a Shosha culture. I think it might be Shosha, same culture. Um, has these like giant fans, I think, in their wedding ceremony outfits. But I think um I was also inspired by Madara from like Naruto and his giant fan. I was like, that's really cool. So um, her clan uses like these giant fans in their fights, like with their wind based powers. And they all have like this orange, really orange long hair. And then Jigen is a prince, but he's also like like one of the head knights. Like he's he's like actually going out and fighting a lot. He doesn't use magic. I wanted the team to be a little more balanced of magic users and like non-magic users. Um, so he doesn't really use magic much, but he kind of punches stuff. Tiri, she's kind of the queen of the kingdom that like one of the kingdoms in this world. She kind of has like an iconic set of things, I guess, characteristics. Because her outfits can really just be anything, but her main characteristics are like the red henna on her hands and feet and then some paint on her head that's kind of red and then these stars, these red stars in her hair. I've been drawing her for a while. I think she's a fun character. She's like boss, boss lady. She's in charge of everything. This is kind of an older character design for Ikan. Like she used to be a guy. But I turned into a girl because like there's too many men in this story. Um, But I might keep this outfit and use it for her in like a later part of the story like from where like to show a major character shift so i really like the shape and flow of this outfit she might get that fan too because i might do plan the fan i'm breaking in the story at some point spoiler alert for a story i haven't written yet this is jigan more of his like character exploration he because he's a prince i do imagine him having more fine jewels on than anyone else would have yeah, he has a bunch of scars. He fights a lot. I did really want to give him long hair because I love giving men long hair, but he, I didn't give it to him. Um, this character on the right, he is a he's another magic user. So in this in the same world, he his dad is like the principal of like this royal uh, magic academy. So he's kind of a big deal himself. Like their family's really well known and established in the in the magic world. He's a <laughs> he's kind of like the Gojo of the story or like the Kakashi of the story. Like he's just basically like kind of really cool and like really skillful. So I'm not going to have, I'm going to have him sparingly because he's just kind of OP. But he has his magic spell book that's kind of leads from and utilizes a lot. Some more just character ex exploration and trying to figure out, you know, clans and stories and stuff. Some more like me trying to figure out like, I think I mostly did this to see how relatively the size is. Because I wanted her to be pretty short and that the guys to be pretty, like, tall. So I was like, I don't know. I feel like there's not a lot of short girls in, like, action stuff. Or maybe that's just me. Like, you don't have to be super tall to be a powerhouse, I think. The guy from before, from the slide, I always forget his, like, head marking. But that's his clan's, like, hair. Like, not hair. Like, marking their clan marking in their head. Kind of like comics and backstory between Itiri. I'm going to drop some more on you guys. Basically, in this world, like, fallen stars are like magic. So these magical fallen stars that fall to Earth um, and don't burn out, they can transform into like these humans, very magical beings. And in this backstory, Akira's mom, I think it's like Akiko or something. Uh, she's like this super, one of the most powerful like stars, fallen stars. And she's kind of like a big boss in... in she kind of, like, enslaves the human race to be her, like, servants and all the other stars are, like, in her court. This is a bit of a backstory because, like, she's actually kind of evil. Like, we don't think humans are, like, animals. Like, they we should get to do what they want. So this is kind of, like, in the beginning of time, like, beginning of the world kind of history. Um, So they're, like, both really old, but this is kind of them having a conversation about, like, what needs to get done and what's going on and stuff. This isn't, like, a fully realized comic, like, our, like this section, but I want to go back and like refine it and make it into a proper comic and post it some more backstory akiro's he had like this servant his like bestie was like, his bestie was a servant kid who this kid didn't realize akiro was like a star too he's like these fallen stars like evil and they're not human so he kind of turned on him he's like how could you kind of like some back backstory lore trauma <laughs> i hope you guys can stay with me here because this is kind of convoluted <laughs> <laughs> kind of backstory but he kind of he can't he used to be able to shape shift but he kind of like swore shape shifting off because he's like i'm human i'm not no monster i'm not an animal i'm as human as you are even though he's like this fallen star oh, i gotta I gotta get there i'm getting there it's in the next slide oh it's in a later slide anyway basically his 
servant boy like turns on him. I can't remember his name. I think it's like Aki or something. I know Aki's like his nickname. Anyway, his servant boy who they call Star Eater now. Star Eater actually lives like super long too because he ended up like eating the heart of like another fallen star because he realized, oh, they're magic and I could probably absorb some of that. So he gets super powerful and he ends up creating like this cult that's against these stars. Fallen stars, so these this fallen star call and the future is kind of reason why the this whole plot in the in the story is happening now because they're like I'm getting there. Ugh. I'm just like this is a convoluted. I need to make a whole video just explaining this better. So Akira has some trauma and he he, he does, like won't shape shift even though it, it could be really helpful in some situations. This is um Atiri. I was figuring out some of her past outfits. So in the past you'll probably see her in like her hair in a fro a loose in like loose style styles but in the present she'll have dreadlocks and like the longer and or shorter they are you can tell how far in the future it is or like in the present it is um happening how much time has passed i can't completely remember her power set i think i'm still trying to figure it out but she creates pearls i think that can tell the future and i think the more shaped like rounder pearls are like trapping people's souls but she's like hasn't figured that out yet Again, she's like super rich. She is the queen. So, you, so her older self isn't as dripped out because she's not as established yet. But in the present, she's like the queen of her kingdom and and pretty rich and well off. This is Akira's room. I kind of was exploring that because it's kind of like his safe haven. Like he kind of hangs out here a lot. And this is kind of like the abandoned version here at the bottom because he he like live he sleeps for like a thousand years before he gets woken up again. Okay, here's his mom, Akiko. She's kind of like, kind of evil. She's a, kind of the big bad of the story, and this is him as a human he's younger. So his mom is like one of the most powerful fallen stars. Like even out of like fallen stars themselves are just much stronger magically than humans, but she even out of the fallen stars, like she herself is like the most powerful. She kind of abuses that power. Um, kind of sees humans as like just her servants. And she was like, I kind of want a kid, so she creates a kid by using her hair to create the Kyrgyz. So he's not even a fallen star exactly. He's like he's like made from a fallen star. She's just super powerful. Um but everyone including him are like, we gotta do something about her because we cannot go on like this. We can't let the people keep living like this. Basically her her skill set is her lan she can create lanterns that trap people's souls in them. And so like she kinda like more e easily control people and get them to do what she wants. And she trapped Akira's soul in a lantern, which you'll see in, in the comic. And that's kind of how people get to make him do what they want him to do. He does end up trapping her in his own lantern. Like her, she, he sells her completely in her own lantern, not just her soul, but her, her entirety, which is pretty like crazy move. So you'll see in the comic, like the kind of plot is like, oh no, like this cult is trying to free her so they can eat her soul, eat her heart, even though she's like, kind of OP like they don't know what they're getting themselves into because there's not that many fallen stars left in the world to be <laughs> basing a cult of eating hearts out of the like, hero in the future does eat star eater and they kind of like meet up again and, and kind of iron out their differences because star eater is like reformed at this point I keep calling him star eater that's kind of like his, his evil name but I don't remember his like his post evil name because I was newer um this piece I did started traditionally in my sketchbook but I ended up um doing finishing digitally I think you guys can read this piece I was one of the first digital pieces I worked on I was still trying to figure out how to make digital art and stuff this one just one more general I just do a lot of fashion-y stuff so it's not necessarily for character specifically but I just like kind of seeing how things look um some figure drawings I did in class I didn't really draw her face in detail because we literally have her so often and she wasn't like my favorite model. So I was just kind of like trying to keep it interesting for me to work too. More character, not character specifically, but like stuff. Like this is a newer piece. You can tell it's newer because I feel like I have a cleaner, stronger understanding of how to make my shapes. And also I feel like I can make something like much more refined in the same time it would take me to make something less refined like in the older pieces so like I think these take probably around the same amount of time but I was more strategic about how I was using my time I love fashiony stuff like the red bottoms and the rubies and 
all that stuff. This on the left is kind of some ex character exploration for this final, not, what did I say Final Fantasy? This is not Final Fantasy. This is Magic the Gathering. This character exploration for this Magic the Gathering card, it's this Inuit throw. Um, I imagine having this unicorn in the card's card, Tamer of Snow, and her voice's name is Snow. So I thought that was funny. So I want to mention, like, oh, if this is, like, ancient times and, like, the, in, the Inuits are there, then why does she have a horse? Horses weren't there yet. Which kind of bothered me because it's, like, it's not just a horse. It's a unicorn. Like, it, like can we have some suspension of disbelief? Of, like, it's a unicorn. Like, can I, like, unicorns don't exist. So I can think even if horses weren't there yet, a unicorn can be there. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just being a hater. I don't know. But um, if I had a little more time to do the research, I would... probably be, I would want to have a more a better understanding of her face markings to make it really more unique to her as a magic user especially but this is some character exploration too I kind of like how her little wonky stars are holding the pearls and I thought that was cute and I also like this guy's stars he has like star beads I think on his hair I think are cute which I kind of started here I started here it's kind of like out of order I did this first and I was like oh that's cool and I did them here the most Yeah, the mask is cool. I can imagine him wearing a mask. I kind of, kind of imagined him as like a bodyguard. I feel like that's what I was thinking in my mind. Like he, you don't really see his face often. And I don't know, I'm not sure. Oh my gosh, some more character stuff. Okay, this is like Lady Bug and Cat Noir um inspired. This is like an AU, I guess, alternate universe. I guess not an AU. Basically, this is my own characters. I'm like, if this AU would be like alternate to the main characters. Anyway. So these characters I designed live like super, super, super far in the future. This ladybug is a archaeologist. Yes. So she studies kind of ancient history. She's Egyptian. So a lot of her stuff is Egyptian inspired. Oh, her, she's a master's. She's in a master's program and her thesis is the miraculous. So this part in, in time in the future, the miraculous are like scattered all over the world. Like they're not like collectively held or watched by a single person. So she's kind of like, that's my goal. I want to collect these miraculous. So in her journey, she does end up getting like the leave like miraculous and she finds herself, she gets a hint that like there's some more in New York. In my idea that New York in this time is like super green and eco and plant forward kind of city. But so she's in this massive program at a museum um, and she's studying and using her time to do this, find these things out. But yeah, I think she's pretty like fun. pretty serious pretty smart this is the fox miraculous holder he also works at the museum with her i don't know exactly but they're super um like they're super fashionable kind of person like very fashion forward but they they're very like sly and sneaky not sneaky in a bad way but like secretive yes which i think is very fitting for the fox user um marcus user they work with the main girl and kind of he's they're kind of like always dropping hints and stuff at stuff so for some reason they just know stuff i don't really have Them fully realized but this is kind of like the idea i don't know when they get the mirac miraculous or how they get it but they definitely get it but they are also friends with the cat miraculous holder and they're the reason why this guy gets it gets the cat miraculous holder so basically this guy is in my idea his mom is some kind of like anti-hero kind of guy like kind of lady and so is he so like His mom back in the day used to be a cat themed villain and she very much like cat lady was just like kind of does crime when she wants but isn't like all bad just for the sake of being bad. I can imagine he is too. It was kind of inspired by that Robin Hood-esque kind of thing. So he definitely was on this cat ride before he even got the cat miraculous. And my idea that Ladybug kind of finds him. He, they like, okay. They hint at like the miraculous being at the museum. So he goes to the museum and tries to steal the some miraculous is but ladybug ends up catching him and like stopping him but before he's like caught a pit in jail because i don't want him to go to jail he's, he's still gotta be the cat holder hawk ma or whoever has the miraculous is like the big bad in the story too so hawk ma from user he jumps in and he kind of snatches up all the miraculous before they get a chance to um, really do much so he gets to escape and hawk ma runs off with all of them because ladybug's more concerned about stopping hawk moth but he runs off but they still have a consistent like dynamic of them not necessarily working together yet looking paler to each other but not necessarily together so this person makes another hint at the miraculous being at some rich guy's house rich guy is the hawk moth user but 
that's not they don't know that yet they just think oh this rich guy just used all his money to buy these things so um he goes to the huck moth's rich guy's house to steal some reactors because he's like okay this these things have to be pretty valuable with some super villains like running off to get them And he ends up being able to snag the cat miraculous with, but you know, obviously you're in Hawk Moth's house. So he's like, Hawk Moth encounters and they fight and Ladybug helps. He, he escapes, but not with only the cat miraculous. So the consistent dynamic up between um, Ladybug and Cat Noir, I'm going to just call him that. That's not like their name. Ken and Lee. He's going to be like Stray Cat or something. And she's going to be like Lady Scarab or Red Scarab or something. Anyway, so the dynamic is just them kind of, she's constantly just on site with them because she's like, you're not supposed to have the miraculous like I'm in charge and blah 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 and and he isn't like I said he isn't necessarily a super good guy but he's more like a um Robin Hood so he is she isn't like necessarily like integrity into the justice but he's kind of like you know you get what you get so her outfit I think is more like Egyptian classic ladybug looks inspired and his is more like techno more future forward kind of look and then another dynamic I can imagine would be funny is like In the future, she's like, oh, man, I need a new roommate. And he kind of gets in a fight with his mom. Okay, he's done more with his mom. He didn't know his mom was like, used to be like this this cat lady villain. But he figures it out. And he's like, oh. he also figures out his mom had stolen him. Because a millionaire, Mahakma, only is stealing these miraculous because he wants to, like, use them so he can find his, like, stolen kid. So I don't know if he wants to, like, rewrite the world for it or if he wants to just, like, take, go back in time or what he's going to use the miraculous for. Because the miraculous, their powers aren't very well documented at this point. Like, they don't really know what you can and can't do with them. But he's like, if I can get these, I can figure out how to get my kid back. So he, this stray cat was that Hawk Moth's kid. They don't, no one knows that yet, except his his mom who stole him. So he figures out, like, oh my gosh, you stole me? Like, like it's not just like, I, you know, like, it's like not just adopted. He's just a ship stolen from someone. Uh, he stole me. But he kind of gets mad and he moves out of his mom's house. So like, Ladybug and him... end up being roommates but they don't know they're each you know they don't know their, their superhero counterparts so it's kind of this dynamic of ladybug kind of having it on site anytime like fighting him every time she, she sees him but at the same time they go home and they live in the same house together and they don't even know it like they like they always encounter each other so often like dang why are you always over here why are you always in my house but they don't realize it yet which i think would be a funny dynamic but i think the first like if we're talking in the sense of seasons i can imagine the first season they aren't working together but Hopefully by the second season, they kind of iron things out and they're like low-key besties. Um, some more figure drawing for my class on the side. Again, I was getting kind of bored. So I was like, I want to do something that's not that's going to hold my attention. This more just exploration for designs and stuff, building designs. And then I saw my finish, more finished books. I want to end on end on some animations because I think they look nice and you guys should look at them. And thanks for watching, guys. I hope you watch my next videos. MV Clock Studios on pretty much everything.